back to the Hero Whispers. It's your Chief Supergirl, Jean Marie, here on the line with you tonight. We have Miss Julia Seraphine. She is an amazing firecracker of a woman already at 21 years old. We're going to hear more about her. She's a social media superstar. I am so excited to introduce you to her. But before that, I just want to tell you a little bit about the show. If you're new to the show, if you don't know anything about us, I have to give you the 411. Supergirls is a platform um, I created or a movement to inspire and empower college women to launch from college to life to help them navigate the crazy real world with career, networking, mentorship, time management, money management, all these tools that we really need in the real world. And uh, we try to help them with it. And the Hero Whispers is our podcast where we let these women share their stories and invite them to hear their voice so that we can better help them, so we can find out what's really making them tick, what they're doing in the world, um, and really spreading the love with them. And I love this work because I just love these women. They're so cool. They have so much to offer. They are our future. And if there's a way that we can help them be better, stronger, and faster, I say, let's do it. Let's make it happen. And on that note, we are going to have a group coaching program launching in February, all about helping these women that are getting ready to graduate, helping them figure out what their next steps are, networking, career clarity, all the things I mentioned are part of the program. So if you know anyone that's interested or that needs a little extra love helping them launch, stay tuned. Check out the website. Check out our Instagram, and we're going to have lots of more information on the program. Okay, now it's time to meet Julia Seraphine. She is a social media prodigy who is in the 94th percentile for cognitive ability. She has had a non-traditional education path as she went to community college to get an associate's degree, take a gap year, and transfer as opposed to going to a four-year university from the start. She also grew up with learning disability and has taken care of her two disabled parents for her entire life. Currently, Julia freelances as a social media manager with clients from all over the world at the age of only 21 years old. She is freaking awesome. Julia, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> I really appreciate the nice introduction. <laughs> You are amazing. I mean, this is, I love the fact that it's so non-traditional um, and you're doing, already doing amazing things in the world out there before you even hit 20, you're like a superstar. And so we have to learn about this. We have to share this with the world and share your love with the world and all of this work that you're doing. It is, it is just super cool. And listeners, just so you know, Julia is helping me with social media. That's how amazing she is. And so I'm just telling you right now, if you need someone to help you with social media, she is your girl. So, um, uh, but first, let's let's talk about, I mean, congrats on all the awesomeness. And Thank all you. Of the, yeah, I mean, all that you've been able to accomplish and so humble, so humble. I'm super impressed. I want to know, like, what is it about you what is it that's inside of you that's like you know driving you so hard all of these challenges that you've had well I would say that I'm a big self-starter and I'm motivated by my larger goals which is to become a public figure in the future and use that status to do good in the world wow okay so I mean, you shared, I know you, you shared, that's an amazing um, aspiration, by the way, to do good in the Thank world. You. I know. I think that if we all had that, you know, thought about life that way, the world would be a much happier place. Not that I think the world is a bad place, but it could be even <laughs> happier <laughs> if people were more, you know, in tune and thinking about like how to make it a better place, how to help people um, and all that, which it sounds like that's in your vision, your big sexy vision. So um, but you, did you think this came out of, I know you had a lot of challenges growing up in your family and you cared for your parents, um, and you had a learning disability. Do you think that this came out of like those struggles? I mean, 
I would say that I really responded well to the adversity. Like at first I had a really hard time adjusting and my grades weren't as good as they should have been. And I couldn't really balance like the adversity with my own school life. And I missed a lot of school, but then I was like able to make a change in my life where I realized that even though I've been through all of this, I've still accomplished many things. And I used that power to sort of fuel myself even more, like, oh, look what I accomplished while I was still dealing with this, or look at what I accomplished while I was dealing with that. And I realized that I'm actually a lot more powerful, and I should give myself some more credit. You absolutely should give yourself credit. I, I can't even begin to tell you uh, you don't even know what you got here. Well, maybe you do, but I'm just telling you that it's just, it's, just, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I, I just want to, I want to talk about this learning disability for a moment though, because you know, a lot of people may have this or a learning disability. And what's really incredible about you is that you, you know, you turn lemons into lemonade. And I love the story that you told me about how you, you took this learning disability, which is ADD. Um, and, you know, funneled that into a power to, I don't know, you describe it better than me. So can you just share that story with, with our guests? Oh, yes, of course. So one symptom of ADD is called hyperfocus, where, like, inadvertently, you would end up focusing on something for an immense amount of time, and you don't even realize it while it's happening. Like, one time, for example... I was in elementary school and we were doing little like packets of math and I was filling out my math packet. And when I looked up and I was done, I realized that I had missed not only the entire math period, but I also missed the entire recess period as well. <laughs> and I had, a, I had been able to get a lot of work done in that time because I was just so focused and it was sort of then at that moment that I realized that maybe I had a little bit of a superpower instead of an adversity. And I've been able to use that sort of hyper-focus to my advantage so that I could study for long periods of time and do a lot of research. Yeah, I love how you put it. It's like a superpower. I use that term all the time in my work because I think that people have something, you know, they have something that drives them or something that makes them special. It's a gift. And so in your case, that is like a super gift. I mean, and but the thing is, you realized it, and then you were able to turn it around and really use it to your advantage. That is the difference. So like you ignited it. Yeah, you like unlocked it already. So like, let, let, tell, the, let tell our listeners too about this, about how you used um, this hyper focus to figure out Instagram, which is your social media prodigyism. We have to talk about that. Your social media prodigy <laughs> status. <laughs> so, when I started getting into social media in college, right when I started college, I realized that I was entering into a space that I had only had experience with when I was very young, and I didn't know very much about Instagram specifically. So I started like doing little bits of research first and I sort of like dug my way through the internet and eventually I was able to find vast resources of knowledge. And in these like forums, articles, and different sources of research, I was able to find so much that I didn't expect and I was able to focus for hours and hours and hours at a time just reading new things and like I was able to like look into the back end of Instagram and look through the API and the algorithm and sort of deconstruct how the website itself works and then when I finally started to get the hang of that I was able to make sense of how to use the website the best way that you can. So w would you say that you're like, you're, are you looking into developing like computers and coding and that kind of thing in your future based on the fact that you were so good at it already? Or do you have other aspirations for yourself? 
I was thinking of probably going into the more marketing and advertising field instead of coding itself because I was able to use different forms of like psychological marketing, sociology, and different applied sciences to like apply them to social media to grow my social media. And that's really what I want to do with my future. Amazing. I mean, you must have perfect score, you have perfect grades in school too, because you're so focused and do all this research and spend so much time. <laughs> I mean, my <laughs> grades are pretty good. I graduated with a 3.7. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, because you're working at the same time, right? You're, you're, you have clients all over the world. How did you manage to do that? Well, actually, I didn't start out taking on clients in college, but I actually started taking them on after I graduated. I uh. started doing freelance with Instagram, just growing Instagram accounts and then like giving them or selling them or using them for my own sort of purposes for marketing. And then that's how I was doing freelancing originally. But I started doing freelance, taking on clients and helping them grow and doing consulting. And I was able to get my client base purely through networking. And I was actually really surprised because, like, the power of networking is amazing. You'll never really realize how nice people are and how social people are until you really put yourself out there. Uh, yeah, that's a really, I mean, that's an important skill. I call it shameless networking that I teach. I help these young women with because a lot of people just don't get it. Um, they don't know what it means. They don't know. They are afraid to, you know, put themselves out there and that's half the battle is just looking fear in the face and saying like, you know, fuck you fear. You know, you got to put yourself out there. <laughs> you just got to do it. And then once you're out there, to your point, you know, you meet nice people and people help you, or maybe they don't, you know, and you focus on the ones that do. So I, I want to go back. I want to uh, step back a, a moment because I want the world to know about your micro influencer status and how you got to that level, because that is huge. What do you have? You have like 40,000 followers on Instagram, right? Or something like that? No, not on Instagram, just spread across my social media platforms. But okay. my most popular platform is, in fact, Instagram, where I'm at 16,000 followers. Okay. Okay. That's a lot. I mean, whatever. That's still a lot of followers. I mean, that yeah. is a huge accomplishment. And I want to know, uh, without getting into all the detail on your secret sauce, because that's, you know, how you get paid. But, like, in general, how did you accomplish this status? Well, it started off pretty slow. Like, I started off having a normal account and having maybe only my friends from school as my followers. And it wasn't until I actually started putting my nose to the grindstone and researching for hours and hours on end that I was able to sort of, like, unlock my own secrets about how to use the platform the best way that I can. And a few that I could probably get into on the podcast without, like, spilling little professional secrets is to probably try to optimize your content and I know it seems like most people could get away with just posting a few like pictures that they took on snapchat of their friends or like just a few pictures of a cool duck that they saw like I know that I'm about to post the duck that I saw <laughs> on one of mine so I'm a little guilty of that but one way to optimize your content is to learn a little bit about photography and a little bit about psychological marketing and how you could take your pictures to somewhat of a better level. For example, like one way to take a really good picture that people will relate to is to have the camera person in like within four feet of you so that when people see the picture, the mirror neurons in their head 